In this video, I'm going to be showing you Chat HN, which is a new open source AI chatbot template that is built in Next.js that uses OpenAI functions as well as the new Vercel AI SDK. So the nice thing with this boilerplate is there's a handful of things that are pre-baked into this template that you can get up and running really quickly with leveraging all these new features that just came out. So if I just demonstrate here uh, the example that is set in the repository is what this is doing that's unique to LLMs right now is it's reaching out to an API. And the way that it's doing that is with the OpenAI functions. So this solves a lot of problems that LLMs have, mainly being able to reach for recent data, but also being able to handle computational logic that LLMs don't particularly handle well. So as you can see here, it reached out to Hacker News, uh, their API, and it returned this response. So behind the scenes, what it's essentially doing is it's sending that first natural language uh, question or query to OpenAI. OpenAI is returning to your server uh, an indication that a function needs to be invoked end with the parameters if there are any then with those parameters it's going to pass it within the function and then the function is going to return the result and then finally send that back to OpenAI and then OpenAI is going to return with the response that you see here so that's sort of the first part and then finally as it's returned, it's going to stream out the response within the UI here. So that is a built in with the new Vercel AI SDK. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head over to the repository for this. So I'd encourage you to give this a star, give Stephen Tay a shout out. I believe he's the developer advocate at Vercel. So really great work here by the Vercel team just across the board. There's a ton of stuff coming out that makes uh, building AI projects really easy for developers. So first we're going to just go over to the repository and then we're going to open up our VS code and we're going to just clone that down here. So I just had a, a empty folder here uh, to clone this out and then we're going to CD into the directory and we're going to open up the directories here as well. So just go to your .env.example and we're just going to remove .example. So once you're here, you can go to the OpenAI uh, platform and get your API key. Super simple to set up an account. You get some credits off the bat if you haven't used it, uh, where you don't need to tie in a credit card or anything like that. So just head over to this link, get an API key, and then once you have that, you can go ahead and save the file. So I'm gonna close that out, and then I'm gonna also uh, just expand the app here, which we'll get into in just a moment. So I'm gonna PNPM install and then just get all the dependencies installed uh, while we while we go through this so within the app there's a few main places that we're going to be working out of so the functions so this is going to be where we can actually edit the functions and i'll go through these in just a moment and then this is going to be where the logic is handled for all the requests that are being sent and you sent to open ai and then received and then also the streaming response for our ui and then finally, our UI itself. Uh, this, are, this is where you can edit the questions if you want those initial uh, questions like you see within ChatGPT, where you, you, know, you see those questions there where you can just sort of pre-fill that uh, input uh, if you like. So those are sort of the main areas. So once you've installed everything, you can go ahead and run the script. So if we just npm run dev, it will just take a moment to start up, and then once it's uh, start all well, started, you'll have that initial application uh, like you saw there. So, if everything installed correctly, you put in your API key correctly, that should all be working now. So once we have that, I just wanted to go through the functions quickly. So there are sort of two pieces to the functions. So there are the descriptions of both what the functions are, but then also what the properties are. So say like if there's parameters and arguments that are being passed within the function, whether they're required, uh, and then also the description of those parameters that are being passed in. So the type, whether it's a number, string, et cetera, you'll have to sort of structure that out. And the reason for that is this is sort of how the LLM is going to be able to parse and send back the proper JSON payload that we're going to handle uh, within our function. 
So that's the first part. And then once you have that description, you have the correlated function as well. So as you see here, so this was a hacker news example, but you could go in here, you can add to this list if you'd like, you can remove things, you know, I'd encourage you if you're brand new to uh, the open AI functions, just even start with one. So start with one, have a simple description, maybe have only a couple properties that you're passing in and try and get that working. And then once you have that working, you can sort of scaffold out and build out from there. So these functions are going to be passed within the route as I showed here. And then if you wanted to swap this out here, uh, so say you have, you know, you wanted to do this with the Reddit API or something, you could go in here and I had some luck before this video is even if you just take this whole context here of this file, put it in chat GPT and say, I want this to be swapped out for, you know, a Reddit equivalent. You could swap that out here, put it in here and then go in and change the example questions if you like. And it worked, you know, sort of first shot uh, when I tried that. So really play around with this, leverage, uh, you know, tools like ChatGPT to help build out your functions. It is a little bit of a new sort of coding uh, paradigm, if you will, where you do have to consider the uh, descriptions of everything, but it's sort of like, almost like an extension of TypeScript, right? It's like we had JavaScript and then we had types, we had to describe our types, and now we have sort of like, you know, natural language script or parameters that we have to consider too. So to be able to have our functions be useful within the context of LLMs, we just have to have these descriptions and, and all of this. So I'd uh, probably, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this is something that's uh, a lot more common within, you know, even like function libraries uh, in sort of, you know, years to come where you'll have your description sort of like, you know, within a closure or something baked in with your functions. So then they're sort of like inherently useful to LLMs out of the bat uh, or out of the gate rather. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below.